from everyday people to celebrities, all ages and walks of life. People decorate their bodies with tattoos. The rapid growth and acceptance of tattoos continues at an extraordinary rate in Australia and worldwide. Understanding tattoos from a social and cultural perspective, the way people use their body art to express themselves, took me on a journey to find the motivation and meaning behind tattoos. The ink on people's bodies is often far from skin deep. Tattoos can be a window to the soul. Welcome to the stories behind tattoos. My guest today will be Paul Martino. Paul Martino, who is the owner of Artwork Inc. Studios and who is going to help me in my journey in finding meanings behind tattoos. Paul, hello darling, welcome to the show. Hello darling and welcome. Incredible, this is so, so beautiful. Paul, how long have you been the owner of this studio? This particular studio was our third studio. I think we opened this particular studio in 2004. Yeah. And why Margaret Riva? I lived here for many, many years in the 90s and uh, it's obviously a very special place to me in my heart and um, even though I've moved back to Perth, I still wanted to have some, some connection. connection to Margaret Riva, yeah. So here we are. Tell me what makes Margaret Riva so special for people like yourself that we will go quickly into it a little bit, that travel so many places or lived so many places in the world. I came here in uh, 91, I think, to go surfing and uh, I did lots of that. And uh, over time I just needed to expand and I started to travel from there. So I left here in the late 90s and moved back to Perth and yeah, we've been on the move ever since. And you're being on the move mostly on your bike. Yes, ma'am. Is this one of your big hobbies? It would probably be my biggest hobby, apart from uh, sailing. Sailing and motorcycles is my thing. And uh, mostly motorcycles. I mean, I spend every day on the bike riding. So, um, yeah, motorcycling, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a big part of my life. And Paul, as you know, that's how we met. I'm looking for the meanings behind tattoos. How did your journey with tattoos begin? I was always into art as a kid. I always drew and I always loved art and drawing and it evolved into tattooing as I was, uh, even in my early teens, I loved tattooing. I always wanted to be a tattoo artist and uh, I got tattooed at 17, which was many, many years before I was a tattoo artist. And what was your first tattoo? Uh, my first one was a Pisces on my arm. Yes. Um, being a Pisces, obviously, was my first tattoo. and. Uh, that was the start of it. There's been many more since then. So obviously the connection to me just being a Pisces was the reason behind that. Yes. Um, but obviously now I have many, many tattoos and uh, all have their own meaning. And may I ask about more mean, most meaningful tattoos on your right arm, for example? Um, it's, that's a jumble. You can't really see what's happening there. But I, uh, I do have a one on my leg, which is the, one of the uh, tattoos I did when I was an apprentice tattoo artist. Yes. And that has a lot of meaning because it was my second tattoo in yeah, it was, it's probably has the most meaning of all. So when you're 17, when you want to tattoo, how do you become tattoo artist just from the dream of doing it, making it happen? It was difficult in those days because it was a very, very closed industry, you know. So it was, uh, I tried and tried and tried, just kept getting knocked back, tried, knocked back, tried, knocked back. Obviously persistence was the key and I just kept at it and at it and at it until I finally uh, met Agung Irianto yes. in, in 2000. And how did you meet? Uh, through a friend, through mm -hmm. a friend, and uh, I got to meet Agung. Obviously, I'd spent half of my life in and out of Indonesia as a child and as a young adult. So obviously, we had a connection there straight away. So um, we met, and he offered to train me as an apprentice, and the rest is history. Okay. 
the history. Can I touch a little bit on it? How do you become from being a tattoos, tattooing artist, to become a businessman and tattoo art owner, yeah. tattoo studios owner? Exactly how it happened was the fact that we just grew and we expanded. I went from a very, very small shop with myself in Agung. Um, business was busy, it was growing. I advertised for artists, I couldn't get any artists, so I trained the next lot of artists ourselves. I put on a, a handful of apprentices. Um, we trained our own artists, we grew, we moved to a bigger shop, then it just kept growing. And I put on managers and we opened another shop and we had more artists and we trained more artists. Then another, another manager and then at that stage it was too busy for me to keep tattooing and I just had to evolve into the business running and the expansion obviously and we ex kept expanding so at that point for me tattooing was just out there was, it just wasn't time to do business stuff and do tattooing stuff so and i believe that you mentioned to me when we were riding that you encourage more female tattooing artists to to make a footprint in the in the industry in those days yes there wasn't many female artists in the industry at all there was in the country there was probably only a, a couple two or three maybe how come boys club against girls? Why women weren't accepted as a tattooing artist? It was just that time frame, I guess. It was that era where it just it wasn't softened yet. And I put on a heap of female apprentices in those days just to try and soften the industry because in those days it was just, it was heavily male orientated and it was. And it definitely, definitely, you helped it to change? Yeah, well, we were one of the first people to put on female artists, so um, I put on female receptionists, I put on female manager, I put on female artists just to try and soften it a bit because it was, it was a bit abrasive in those days, you know. How wonderful. Yeah. How many years back we're talking again? Sorry. 20. 20. Yeah. So how many female artists or people, how many female employees you've got now? In that 20 years, we've trained have to be easy a dozen female artists in that time all very very good artists in their own right so wonderful and we softened the industry which is great because now female artists are everywhere obviously uh, internationally female artists is just a thing it's it's so you you were an absolute trailblazer in introducing female force to into the industry to, to uh, the one, industry 100 percent 100 percent incredible yeah and it's 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 paid off very well. It's, it has softened the industry. Yes. And the industry did need that. And obviously some of the best artists are female artists, so it's... Thank you. When you say it's softened the industry, what do you mean by it? It's made it more approachable for mainstream people to be not as intimidated or, or made to feel uncomfortable. That's right. By some big smelly guy with a beard as opposed to a soft, beautiful female. <laughs> and here comes my next question. I know very little and very close to nothing about tattoos. I'm absolutely fascinated by the wide range of people, demographic ages, reasons for people getting tattoos. I think from what I have experienced in my encounters with people that almost every tattoo has a meaning behind and has a story behind. And therefore I feel so privileged to be able to talk to you today. Paul, tell me, am I right in thinking so? You're 100% correct. And I mean, you could ask the people being tattooed here right now, does their tattoo that they're receiving right now have meaning? Of course it would. And that's the thing that is an individual experience for each individual person. And obviously I have many tattoos which all have their own meaning, as do everybody who receives a tattoo. They, they are doing it for a... There is a reason behind it, most certainly. When I was researching for the programme and for the journey, I found out that can be reasons like celebrating, covering pain, uh, grieving, yes? There's a, yeah. Manifesting friendships, give me... There's a million reasons. Obviously each reason is individual to that own... To that particular yes. person um, but yeah most certainly you are correct and the the stories you would get from interviewing people for the reason being tattooed really would be infinite you could ask you could you could carry this on for the rest of your life you would never get enough answers or enough reasons because everybody has their own story and that's, that's a real thing so there is definitely a link between mental health and tattoos most certainly 
especially in a healing process, you know, um, most certainly. Can you give me most memorable stories, most extreme stories, without obviously calling names, uh, that's, that, <laughs> that you met on your journey, something that took you by surprise or gave you emotional um, impression? Uh, there are, honestly, there are so many. I could, I could tell you emotional stories. I could tell you stories all day long about different experiences with people and the reasons they've been tattooed. Um, all right, let's start today. Let's. <laughs> Are you ready to, to bring back some unusual stories, people, encounter with tattoos? Listen, I've had time to think about it, and uh, there, there's been so many experiences. There's been Olympians, there's been professional athletes, there's been actors, there's been royalty. Um, there's been so many that I wouldn't like to particularly single anybody out or name names. But uh, it's been entertaining, Incredible. interesting. It's been interesting, and there have been a lot of stories. And for me to honestly just to single one out, um, I couldn't. There's there's so many. So Paul, that actually proves uh, the point that we were touching up on: how the social acceptance of tattoos is changing. It's most certainly changing. I mean, as you know. <clears throat> um, Business people are tattooed now, um, professional athletes, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's celebrities, there's musicians. That it really covers all walks of life now. Yes, and also the, the enormous, enormous presence on social media, <laughs> showcasing styles, teaching you. As you know yourself, you look on social media and everybody's tattooed these days, so it's, um, it, re it really is it really is a one a socially acceptable medium and two it's it has been softened in the sense that people of not just a dubious nature are tattooed these days you know like in the old days it was obviously associated with sailors or, or criminality where these days it's just across the board like it's everyone's tattooed because for example i met somebody recently and it was a family who was three sisters they had a breast cancer one of them and the other two including the girl who was affected by the breast cancer they received the same tattoo as a obviously manifesting of belonging and love i was so touched when i heard it i would never think you know the tattoo can come from this kind of a yeah and it's 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 quite a, a common thing it's um we've had literally hundreds of people come in post post-cancer or post-surgery or post-trauma, uh, you know, their own personal traumas in life, as survivors of many different things. And uh, we've had families, we've had, you know, mothers, daughters, fathers, sons, all be tattooed with the same tattoo that has a meaning in particular to their, to their experience. Um, there's, there's many, many, many of those stories. Also celebrations, very happy tattoos, tattoos showing their, yes, belonging. Every range of emotion that you can think of, people have celebrated that emotion by being tattooed, whether it's traumatic or it's they've just won the lotto, or it's, 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 it's very, very vast. The lucky lotto numbers as a, as a lucky Please. tattoo. I'm, go, I'm thinking, I'm slowly thinking of my perfect tattoo. Paul, would you think, would you say that Tattoo art or tattooing is one of the oldest traditions in civilization. How many years goes back tattooing art? It's thousands and thousands of years old and it is one of the oldest traditions and one of the oldest art forms and it's one of those things that hasn't been yet interfered with by machinery so you still need an artist, a human artist to tattoo you. You know, everything else is done by machine these days, obviously. Um, tattooing is one of those last creative professions where you need a human to <clears throat> to translate that art onto yes. your skin in, in their interpretation of it. So. Mm -hmm. And the first tattoos came from, I believe they were they were executed by travellers and used as the There's documentary of the journey, the places they went, because there was no maps, there was no GPSs. Yeah, well, there's obviously different uh, documentation of different time frames of tattooing, but I mean, there's, they're pulling people out of the ice 
that are 10,000 plus years old with tattoos on their faces. So it's been, it's been uh, a long, long time. How is the general stigma, perception of tattoos, the acceptance changing over the last 20 years? And I had my personal experience in a bank where the same person two years ago would have to cover it. Today, she was sitting with an open, you know, with short arm shirt, showing her tattoo as an employee of a bank. Obviously, I'm not calling brand. Yes? It's, it's true. It has been, obviously, a lot of stigma attached to tattooing, and there still is. Um, obviously, today is a lot less than there has been in the past. Um, although, the way things are going at the moment, it's being reattached. But, I mean, people like famous celebrities and, f and sports people have softened the image of tattooing, I guess, and made it more acceptable and more um, generic in a household sense. Um, you know, you see famous soccer players or footballers with tattoos all the time, and that's acceptable. So a lot of Hollywood people have tattoos now, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really grown. It really has grown. I believe that as a doctor, you can now have tattoo. Before, as a doctor, there was uh, stigma or limitation that doctors weren't allowed to have tattoos. This is now my small research before we sit down. What are most, give me a few walks of life professions and age groups that are coming and want to be tattooed in your studios. You could not put an age group or a demographic on it. It's just, it, these days it's just open to everybody, whether it's teenagers right through to great grandparents. I mean, we tattoo 80 year old people regularly. Um, wow. 80. 80. Wow, okay. And every, like I said earlier, everyone has their own reasons and, yes. their own, and their own story behind those tattoos, whether it's family stuff or trauma or whatever. Um, but yeah, t tattooing as a whole has, has been accepted. I think these days if you're successful in your profession, you can really, if you've got tattoos and you're successful and you're good at what you do, then there isn't really an issue, is there? It's okay. And if you're not? Well, <laughs> ask the boss. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> ask their boss. <laughs> yes, okay. Which brings me to the last question. In times of pandemic now, where the world is, do you think there is an increasing need for tattoos from people that feel um, de sometimes deprived of many aspects of expression that they had before? I think so. I think that's a thing as people have been obviously in isolation and locked down. Yeah. People have discovered themselves. People have, have opened their minds to things like spirituality or, or love or any of those things that may have been in the, in the back part of their minds at some stage, but I think just being isolated and, and time on their hands, they've stepped out and their minds have hopefully grown and uh, yeah the, I think the expression or the people's need to express themselves in tattooing through that isolation has, has most certainly grown most certainly it's, but the, I mean the pandemic for us um, has been very very good in a business sense because people do want to be tattooed um, and we are one of the fortunate industries I guess where we have we have done quite well from it just through people's mental health um yeah there's many many reasons but yeah we've we've done well thank you okay amazing paul if you were to if i was to give you a magic wand i always give my guests magic wand and you have a wish for yourself and you have one wish for the world what would be your two wishes <laughs> the wish for the world would be that people would be more accepting and more open-minded and uh, more forgiving. Wish for myself, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. I wish I'd be more forgiving and more accepting myself. So probably the same thing. Here we go, wonderful. Yeah, which I am very forgiving and very accepting, but... Uh, it's a lot to forgive and a lot to accept in today's world. Paul, thank you so much for being guest on my show. I continue my search for the meanings behind tattoos. And I think I'm going to consider my perfect tattoo in the future and I know where to come. You know definitely where to come. We'd love to look after you and thank you for Thank you for being my in. guest. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.